<laughs> What's up everybody, Bryce and Michael RC here, and I've already put out the process video to the Boba Fett. Uh, I had a comment on the Iron Man saying that uh, if I was doing Boba Fett that they wanted to see the process video of that, so I tried to make it uh, pretty detailed, but I was trying something a little bit new, and I put a little caption at the very beginning of it saying, you know, I kind of did it with the Batman, and I kind of like doing it that way more than making video after video and trying to string the videos together and edit, edit all the videos because uh, I always have my phone on me and whether it's about to die or not I can at least snap a picture of things that I'm doing and, and put little captions and stuff so since I've done so many of these cosplays and you guys have seen me do the weathering I've explained how to do the weathering I've explained how to do the bondoing I've, I've showed how to spray paint tape all that different stuff has been shown in all these previous cosplays that I, I feel like just taking a picture and saying, you know, I wet sanded here or there, I don't have to show you, and if you want to see it, you guys can go back. And there's plenty of tutorials out there on weathering, on spray painting, uh, basics on rattle cans, you know, how far to stand back and how close to get, how many coats to put on, 3D printing, what's the best, uh, how many coats uh, while wet sanding and all this different stuff. I mean, there's tutorials to just about everything, so I feel like getting in depth and making like 30 minute videos or four process you know four part process videos and stuff for every single cosplay just gets a little bit redundant and it gets a little out of control and fills up my computer's memory and stuff so I'd rather just snap a picture it's so much easier on me and I feel like you guys aren't dumb I feel like you guys get what's going on and so I don't have to like act like I'm teaching a class or something so the next few that I've actually made uh, which is right here and right here that are, that are going to be the next three weeks that's that's how I've done the process video this one and this one are both done and I can't wait to show you guys those but that's not what this video is for this video is the review of the 3d printed Boba Fett helmet that's available for free on Thingiverse if you guys want to go over on Thingiverse and I want to show you something first before I show you the actual helmet and I feel like this is warranted this right here is a mess up okay it's a mess up of the helmet. It was way, way too small, so I had to reprint it. I wanted to try to do it all in one take, so none of this is glued together except for where I dropped it and broke it. This is a low resolution print. And what that means is there's no rounded edges. It's all straight edges. And so the rounded head part is all made in straight edges and angles. You guys can see how the light shines off of it. Uh, exactly how that's done. It's I think it's a paper cure file and what I've noticed with the free paper cure files on Thingiverse is they're super thin. You don't know if you're gonna get a re low resolution like this. That wasn't a low resolution. That one that one had curved edges and stuff so that one was awesome but a lot of the time the paper cure files end up something like this and super thin. I mean that is really really thin. It's so thin that it feels brittle. You can, you can, I mean, I broke that there easily. I broke it over on that side easily. I dropped the one that I'm about to show you Why? when, when I was pretty far into the process and had to glue it back together and rebondo it and stuff. So when it comes to something like this, I would suggest that the first thing that you do, instead of using Bondo Putty, uh, instead of using the Flex Bondo that I really, really love to use, which I used both of them on this, uh, I would suggest you go two or three coats on top of all that with Bondo glass. Fiberglass uh, helps strengthen things and this is so thin uh, you know you're gonna be adding paint to it and, and filler and, and everything else on top of that. Uh, it's a good idea to go and strengthen this out any one of these paper cure files. Plus since it doesn't have any curved edges what Bondo glass tends to do is when you put it on, it looks like you put it on super thin and then you let it dry and it kind of just uh, expands a little bit. Uh, so it gives you just a little bit more to work with and you sand it down and there ends up being pockets like air pockets and stuff that, that get trapped into it because of the little shreds of fiberglass and stuff that's inside of it. Uh, so that's what's called Bondo glass because it's Bondo with fiberglass particles mixed in with it. Uh, and those cause little air bubbles and stuff. So then you can go back with the Bondo putty and go over all those little spots. Uh, but I would suggest putting some fiberglass. It strengthens it up uh, and it makes it a be better, easier print. A lot of us that have 3D printers and stuff before 3D printers got to be in such a hot topic, 
uh, did paper cure stuff. I did a, I did a Power Rangers paper cure once, and in the files you just fold them, and then you cut certain parts, and then you glue, glue certain parts together and stuff, and it's super fun to do. Uh, and so they, they translate right over to these 3D prints and stuff. So I just wanted to show you guys that. I know that it's already pretty far into the video. Uh, I just wanted to kind of show you guys this, and, and, and it's, it's probably... I didn't look too hard. There might be another Boba Fett helmet on there that might be straighter. I'm not 100% sure, but this is all I found. But again, I wasn't searching hard. Here's the finished Boba Fett right here. The complete finished. And I think I might have mentioned this in the process video that uh, each one of these marks and stuff on this helmet, they're not 100% accurate. It's kind of hard to do that when it's so weathered. It's such a weathered helmet. Uh, it's got such unique marks and stuff all in it. It's kind of hard to get those exactly right. Uh, not only in color, but also in shape and size and things like that. So what I ended up doing is I took a, a sand a piece of sandpaper, 220 grit, and after it was all all done and, and almost looked like a brand new Boba Fett helmet, what I did is I went through and I while looking at the picture next to it, I went and, and just sanded down everywhere where there was spots on the actual helmet. Just, just made sure that I sanded down little spots just so I knew that that's where one of these, you know, real big pieces and scuffs and stuff were. Uh, and then while looking, I tried to do as much as I could with uh, paint and, and just different, different products and stuff to get it as close as I possibly could. But uh, you're, you're not going to get 100%. Even the people who make the helmets for sale, I think they have these for like 300 or something online. Uh, I don't think those are 100% movie accurate. You kind of just got to get as close as you can. And I think that I did a pretty good job. In fact, I was so happy about this whenever I got done. I was so pumped about it because when I, when I, this is an undertaking for me. When I first started this, I was just like, there is no way that I'm going to be able to make this look good. There's so much weathering, so much detail. There's the, the side yellow pieces on it. I had to find the, the other side pieces and I forgot to save the, uh, I forgot to save the file for the size that I made it because this is made for my son. So it doesn't fit me. Uh, I resized it to his head, and so then I had to save these off and resize those uh, way later, and I and I didn't save the, the file, so uh, I didn't save the file in the size of his head, so I had to resize these by, by measuring and stuff, uh, so I got this to, to work here. I had to create the mechanics inside myself on Tinkercad, and you guys can see that in the process video. There's a few little pieces in here. It doesn't go down all the way anymore. It did go down all the way in front, but whenever I dropped it, like I mentioned before, it split that and it busted the little mechanics out that I had in here. So I had to put it in there the best that I could. It's got a little magnet right there and then on the inside of here to, to hold it up top, but it just doesn't go down forward all the way and that's something that I'm going to have to go back and fix. You can see in the process video I'm messing with it and it goes all the way forward. Uh, it just doesn't right now. Uh, I'm gonna have to go in and fix it. Another thing too is whenever it was printing, uh, one of these little tabs in the back ended up busting off over here, and I couldn't find it because it's such a tiny little piece. Uh, but it doesn't really take too much away from it. Uh, and you can see that I didn't add the little inside piece that goes right there because I, I just didn't find it necessary. Uh, some of these helmets, especially like this, that's completely covered up in the front, there's really no ventilation and stuff. It's nice to have a little bit of ventilation in it. Uh, and you'll, you'd probably use a bataclava while wearing this if you wanted to go cosplay or something. So that bataclava is probably going to be black and it's going to cover that up anyways. You're not going to see on the inside of it. You're not going to be taking it off and showing it to everybody. So, well, you might. I don't know if you're really proud of it. Uh, so I wasn't too worried about adding that piece in there. It's just a little bit of ventilation little way to get some coolness on you and stuff because that front's gonna fog up very 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 easily uh, also because of you know I've wore a bunch of all these helmets I've put them on and I've worn throughout the house I've worn them outside and stuff in the heat and everything just to kind of see how they were all of them fog up all of them get super hot inside and so what I've been doing here recently is there's these little envelope things that go inside a planner like a notebook or something and they're little plastic things you just put pieces of paper and they're like 99 cents at Walmart. I've been using those as the visor stuff and just kind of tinting those there. It's super thin, super thin plastic, but it's just rigid enough that it stays in place like it's supposed to and it looks really good with the tint and stuff on it. So 
Uh, that way it's just a lighter, another lighter piece. This is already thin, which I appreciate because of all the heat and stuff that's going to generate from having this on top of your head. Uh, and then that's super thin too. If you had like a really thick visor and a really thick helmet, it would get super hot inside. Uh, and then had the vents closed up and stuff. So this is actually actually a little bit ergonomically more correct than it than than probably the original Boba Fett helmet. So uh, when it comes to you know feeling decent inside, I, when you're when you're out uh, bounty hunting and finding people like Han Solo out in the Tatooine desert. I bet you don't want to be super, super hot with your visor completely fogged up. Anyways, I'm a huge Star Wars fan. If you guys haven't noticed, I've got the Kylo Ren right up here, and I've got the Darth Vader right over here, and this is just another in the collection of Star Wars helmets. I am going to make a Stormtrooper. I'm planning on making a Stormtrooper. I don't know why I haven't made one yet. I think the only reason why I haven't made one right now is because I can't pick... I don't know which one I want to do. The new one or the... the the Imperial Stormtrooper or the First Order Stormtrooper. I'm not sure which one I want to do because I like the Storm, the First Order Stormtroopers a little bit better. They're a little sleeker and nicer looking, but the Imperial ones are the original Stormtroopers, and you can't, you just can't beat that. That's why I have Darth Vader and Boba Fett, uh, and only one character from the new series because uh, I like the older ones better. I'm old school. I love the old Star Wars movies. They're they're just amazing, and I can't believe I didn't make this sooner. In fact, I can't believe that I didn't make this for myself. My son got really lucky. Uh, I was trying to figure out a helmet to make for him. I stumbled over this thing on Thingiverse, and I was just kind of modeling and messing around with it, and, and I had just taken the measurements for his head, and I came in, and I was like, what do you think about Boba Fett? And he came back out, and he goes, Dad, I've got a Halloween costume that's Boba Fett. And so we just kind of decided there, and he absolutely loved it when it got done. And it's one of those that just kind of comes on, so you don't need too much mechanics. You don't have, it's not like the Iron Man masks. Uh, where you have to take the front plate off or anything like that. Uh, it's literally just one piece that just goes right on top of your head. Uh, there's padding inside to keep it in place. Uh, there's 3M sticky tape right here to keep the, the visor in place. So, I mean, it's just a badass helmet. So, I appreciate I think Chase is the one who did this. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, I know that he does all the paper cure files. Uh, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. But if I'm right, then thank you for yet another amazing... Um, cosplay helmet. I'm going to do a real slow turnaround. One more real good look at this so you guys can check it out. If you guys have any questions, if you guys decide to make this or anything, please leave a comment below. Uh, you can ask me anything. This thing was a lot of fun and it, it, it's daunting at first. It seems like uh, it just seems kind of like you're going to be overwhelmed and stuff. All the different colors of spray paint, all the different. You have to dry brush in, you have to spray paint, you just have to. And you have to use a Bondo, and you have to use a filler. Like, you have to use everything in order to get this right. Uh, so, if you have any questions, feel free to get on. Just ask me. It's, it's such an awesome piece. It looks really great. Um, and I don't know what else to say about it. I really don't. It's, it's, it's a great piece, so... Uh, it's going right up here on the shelf. You guys haven't noticed I moved a few up to the very top. We're getting really full on this shelf. I need another shelf. I keep forgetting. I need to go out and purchase another shelf. So this is going to be moving around like crazy and stuff. Uh, I'm working on smaller cosplays. The next few weeks are going to be smaller cosplays. We've got the Iron Man arc reactor. We've got the ether from Thor the Dark World. And then we've got the Eye of Argamodo that I'm doing right here. Each one has LEDs. Each one is super freaking bright because I'm putting way more LEDs than anybody else online has put into them so far. The Eye of Argamoto is so bright. I don't have it on right now because I've only got a, a certain amount of these batteries. Uh, but that one I'm still working on. I've still got to do the necklace piece and stuff. But that one is probably going to be one of my favorites. I, I also got the stand. So there's going to be two links in the description to two different people who have made kind of made these together. If you get the Iron Argamoto, you want to get the stand that goes along with it. It's sized perfectly for it. Uh, so I think it's the same one that Uncle Jesse did too. I'm not 100% sure. The eye opens on the inside and stuff. So anyways, you guys will have to come back for that. Just keep checking back. The arc reactor was a lot of fun to do. I didn't have to do any sanding, any bondo or anything like that. So that one I'm so pumped to show you because it's such a huge change from what I've had to do. Uh, the lights are so bright that you don't you don't have to worry about any of that other stuff because it's all about the LEDs and everything and you're not it's so bright that you can't get up there and, and see all the the 3D um, 
you know, filament lines and stuff anyways. Uh, and then the, that was a ton of fun. The ether was a lot of fun. I'm a huge Thor fan. If you guys can't tell, I've got Mjolnir and I've got Stormbreaker up back here. So another thing from Thor is, uh, I mean, anything I can find from Thor, I really want to do Loki's big old horned helmet. But anyways, my name is Bryce and Michael RC. Keep checking back every Thursday for another cosplay review, reveal. Uh, I usually do the process videos if there is a process video along with it sometime early in the week, either Monday or Tuesday or something like that. Keep checking back. Hit that notification button. Hit that like button. Leave me a comment in the comment field if you guys have any suggestions or anything. We'll see you guys later. Y'all have a good one. Peace.